Well, hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. And today, we're going to be doing part one of big questions about every NHL team uh, that we did on our live stream. Uh, I put it out there. What's the big question? What's what's the query? What is the intriguing thing about every NHL team? And we, we put our heads together. Did a little Perla dance, of course. We all did it. Everybody. You can do it, too. You can. You can do it right now. You should be doing it right now. But you can hit the subscribe button and like and uh, become part of the frolic. Three to five Eastern. Um Five days a week, weekdays, we're on there. And there's much frolic. There is much frolic. I'll tell you that right now, boys and girls. Also, Steel Flyers All Sports Network. It's the best there. I said it. If you like the four major sports and teams within those four major sports, you'll love Steel Flyers All Sports Network. Uh, NHL Pearl of Wisdom Show. Check it out. Okay, let's take a look because we got a lot to get into here. Let me tell you right now. Anaheim Ducks starting first. Big questions about the Anaheim Ducks. Uh, will will Steele live up to the hype? And th this is the year for Steele. He's 23 years old. That's Sam Steele. He's 23 years old. Um, 12 points in 42 games last year. They were expecting or wanting what much more offense. You could say the same for Jones here too, actually. But... Um, Sam Steele is supposed to be the second line center. Now he's 30th overall, 23 years old, really was thought to be a, an offensive star coming out of, uh, junior. Um, they really 83 points in 54 games, 33 goals in 2016, 17, he looks like his tra trajectory is a third-line center, and that is not what they need him to be. That's not what they expect him to be. So that's what they're hoping. We said that that is one of the most intriguing things. Of course, the other one is what everybody in the land will be talking about when it talks about the Ducks. How is Trevor Zegers going to do in the 1C spot? Is he going to get the 1C spot? I imagine he will be. He's got Ryan Getzloff there to help him out. But everybody, after that amazing World Junior Championships, and he came in and got 13 points in 21 games uh, to start his career at the end of uh, the tail, well, I guess about almost halfway through the season last year, um, had 21 points in 17 games for the Gulls. Uh, that's pretty good numbers for a 21-year-old. And, of course, 18 points with seven goals for you for USA at the under 20s a lot of expectation a lot of intrigue for uh Zegris um I can't wait to watch him play I just love the guy it's going to be awesome and I think those were two good questions so let me know Arizona uh, Anaheim fans what do you think of those two uh Arizona where will Kessel go is the number one question Arizona and then will they win the lottery that is Unfortunate, but I do believe most people will say that it's pretty likely that this is a lottery team here. Not much else intrigue other than, you know, we can Jacob Chikrin keep on going the way he's been going. But where will Phil's Kessel go? He, apparently he's asked for a trade uh, already. Uh, they haven't been able to accomplish that. That's not a fact. No, I haven't heard anybody from Arizona say, yes, Phil got a trade. If you're an Arizona fan and I'm and, and you've heard otherwise, let me know. I haven't heard Phil Kessel specifically come out and say that. It's mostly come out of uh, insiders saying that he, he asked for a trade, preferably before the season started. Where will he go? I had an idea that maybe a good spot for him at the deadline where his cap space would be a little more manageable would be the Edmonton Oilers. But tell me what you think, Arizona fans out there. Would you like yourself some Phil Kessel? Arizona, would you like to remove yourself as some Phil Kessel and get some picks and do keep on going with that rebuild in Arizona? Uh, next, Boston Bruins. First big question for the Boston Bruins that came out from the live stream was, 
how will Allmark and uh, how will Allmark versus Swayman go? And I thought that was a heck of a quick question. Uh, Linus Allmark quietly had, even though he only played 20 games last year, which isn't bad, uh, got injured, but he had a 0.917 save percentage and a 2.63 GAA on an absolutely abysmal team. Truth is, Linus Allmark has actually been doing very good the last two years. I thought it was an exceptional signing. And uh, then, of course, we've got the kid, Swayman. Oh, my gosh. The kid, 1.50 and a .945 in, in uh, 10 games that he played. And he just looked absolutely fabulous. There's been rumblings about Swayman now at a college uh, in the college ranks uh, for quite a long time. And all the people that were doing those rumblings are going, aha, I told you so now. Now, he's young. We know how young goaltenders can be. It'll be. It's going to be really interesting to see if Swayman or Allmark nab the number one. I love that question for the Boston Bruins. Next one, how will Hall perform? And uh, yes, he's been bouncing around the league. He has finally gets, he, he says he loves Boston. He loves the energy there. Um, he took apparently a little less at $6 million, a little less. I don't know. I thought that was kind of all the money. But um, is he, he's happy. He has no excuses. Is he going to crush it after having a tough time in Buffalo? I personally think he's going to do very, very well. What do you guys think? Do you think Hall's going to do well, or do you think he's going to kind of slip? Uh, there has been this ongoing thing where he's tough in the room. Now, I don't know what happened. Obviously, they didn't think so for the short time he was there in Boston. Is that going to creep back in here? Um, but I, I think he's going to do great. The biggest issue I have and possibility that he won't is finding that center partner now that Krejci is gone. That's a little bit concerning because um, Hall is a guy that really does need a good center, uh, especially a goal-scoring one since he likes to pass a lot. Um, and then that leads to the next question. Who will be the second-line center? Um, apparently going to start with Charlie Coyle. I think it would be great for Charlie Coyle if he knocked it out of the park finally. He's been given lots of opportunity, and he gets another one here. After a rough go last year with 16 points in 51 games. Could he do it? Sure. I heard he was uh, fairly fighting some injuries last year and all that. This just may be that chance that he's 29 years old, fully mature now. Maybe he takes it by the horns and does it. Otherwise, you're looking at uh, maybe Felino back in the middle. He played, in, he played center in Columbus and fared fairly well. I don't think that would be necessarily idea. Eric Halla has played center fairly well in stages of his career. Those could be options. What do you think, Boston Bruins fans? Who's going to take that number one spot? Or do you think they're going to still go out and get another center to go for the Boston Bruins? Uh, next, the Buffalo Sabres. And it's going to be the Eichel conversation for until he gets moved. Of course, where will Eichel go? That's the number one question that came from the live stream. Uh, and I'm thinking the, the most, the team I'm hearing most often um, is uh, the LA Kings. Um, and they've got the centers to bring, to send back that uh, can put, to, put together, together a pretty good package. But they got to figure out what's going on with the surgery and all that kind of stuff like that. This could drag on for still a very long time, and it's totally unfortunate. I don't know what it is with Eichel about not wanting the surgery that the Sabres want to give him. The Sabres obviously are not happy with that surgery, and there's insurance issues, and oh, man. But really, Buffalo, get this taken care of. It would be awesome for them to just run smoothly for it. A couple of years now for these great Sabres fans who are some of the greatest sports fans in seriously in the world. Do you know that Sabres fans for other people's teams and other sports quite often have more people watching other teams' teams 
than the actual team in baseball, hockey, football. They are incredible sports fans and deserve better than this. Uh, next, who will be the next captain? And uh, I personally think this won't be done this year. I, I don't think they're going to pick somebody this year to be a captain. Rasmus Dahlin need, uh, is just got his new contract. Um, you have a new coach. Uh, that would be the guy I would think, but I don't think they want to throw that at a 21-year-old again. <laughs> you know, a young player like this. Maybe Cody Eakin if he wants to stick around for a while as a veteran, but there there isn't really all that much veteran leader. Were you going to give it to Skinner? Probably not, right? Probably not. Um, so yeah, I would say they're they're not going to sign anybody right now, or give or sign anybody a captaincy. Maybe a couple assistants, captains out there, and then they'll look at who they get back for Eichel, for instance. Maybe that could be the captain of this team. But they'll see who takes the bull by the horns and shows that they want to ha take on that type of role, I think. Um, and uh, what was the next one? Will they win the lottery? That's, yeah, I don't want to. We did that for Arizona. But those are the two major questions. Calgary Flames. And uh, the first question that came out, it came from a few people, was will Goudreau be part of this team after the deadline? Um, and that's just been out there for such a long time now. And, of course, he's going to be a UFA this year, next year. So if things don't go well, there's a possibility Goudreau could finally have that trade that's been talked about for a long time. It doesn't appear that Goudreau really wants to go. It really does. I think, seriously, he's, he's put his roots there in Calgary, and he would like to stay. But if this team flops... I think you're going to see more than Goudreau going. Uh, I think you'll see a lot of players out the door. This is the year. This is the one. Look at all the UFA guys you got here. Dubé, uh, Richie, Lewis, Richards, Goudreau, Zadaroff signed like they brought over Zadaroff. He's going to be a UFA. So this is the year, man. They got to do it this year. Uh, how will Coleman do? That is a that's the second one. I was surprised that wasn't the first question actually, but uh, the second question was how will Coleman do? And you know what? I am not sure here. I'm really not sure. I think this was a kind of a risky play. I think he's a good third line winger and maybe getting paid a little more than he should at uh, five million dollars. Um, that happened to play with a really strong Tampa Bay team. Uh, you know, he got basically half a point a game for two years and got $5 million. Now, I understand there's a attitude that comes with Blake Coleman, and that's really what I think that they picked him up for, was that attitude that could add some offense, a winner's attitude that works his butt off. Also, to take a little bit of pressure off of Matthew Kachuk, Focus on offense. By the way, he's a restricted free agent coming up. There's questions about his um, money that he may get. This is a huge year for Calgary. But it takes the pressure off of Matthew Kachuk to do some of that nasty stuff. You know, Coleman can take over. He can just focus on putting up offense. I don't mind the deal. I like risky deals. Um, I like guys like Coleman. I love it. But I, for some reason, I could also see it totally backfiring them, on them. What do you guys think there in Calgary about that? Uh, Carolina Hurricanes. First one, and this is everywhere. Right from the time that they let Bernier not go and decided to stick with Anderson and Ranta, brought in Ranta, two of the most injured goaltenders last year. So this, the question is, will the goalies be healthy? And of course, I have no crystal ball. I don't know. But I will say that I have to figure that they've got some inside information on Frederick Anderson and his injury situation last year. Actually, even the year before he was struggling, it seems with the same injury, that it's healed and ready to go. And if it is, 
I, I think they'll be fine. I mean, Anderson a couple of years ago in Toronto with a really bad defense put up some pretty okay numbers. I, you know, I say okay, 0.918, two, you know, 2.81, but they were really not that great defensively. Um, I don't even worry about the GAA as much as this. Putting up a 0.918 with that defense was not bad, but the last two years it went south. And point nine, uh, a nine oh nine and an eight nine five, and the injury situation certainly leaves you with question marks. And uh, of course, there's also Anti Ranta, who just could not stay healthy last year at all. Um, he got twelve games the year before that. He had thirty three games, and then the year before that had twelve. When he had their thirty three games, though. He was still injured quite a bit, and he was injured for that playoffs. So that, it's like three years of, of serious injuries. Now, the thing about it is when he's good, he's freaking amazing. When he's healthy, he's amazing. If, And I imagine they must have some inside believing that he is going to be healthy. If Ranta is healthy and Anderson is healthy, they're set. Like that is a this is a team that could go so much one way or the other, rely with the, with the especially with their goaltending, but if both of them are flying, I would even say Ranta could even take that number one spot. He is so good. His numbers point nine three zeros, uh, save percent uh, save percentages over and over and over again. Like fantastic goalie when he's healthy. He's just not healthy very often. Uh, and of course, the I was surprised that was the number one question. Number two question was how will I thought this would be the number one? How will just just Barry Kokaniemi perform? Um, as you can see, a cap friendly here. It looks like they're going to be playing him on the left side, possibly. I think that would be easier for him to work himself into the lineup too. Um, but apparently, talking to Montreal fans, they tried that in Montreal, and he didn't look good. However, how, how patient were they with it? Um, given some patience, give him some time. Um, in a Carolina team that is very set structurally, I just think I think this is the perfect spot for Kokaniemi. Carolina's got the type of structure that I think is perfect for his game. He seems very routineary on the ice, and he gets thrown off when the routine gets thrown off. So... With Carolina, that's ever, they're totally about routine. They're totally about a system that everybody plays in a certain way. This happens, we do this. This happens, we do this. I think he's going to do well there. I think. It's, what do you think, Carolina fans or other fans out there? Is How is Kokaniemi going to do, do you figure, in Carolina? How will D'Angelo do after... Uh, quite the debacle last year with the New York Rangers, of course. My lean is, and I'm not, you know, you're, you're, we're only looking at what logically could happen or will happen or is more the highest percentage. Here's the thing about the signing to D'Angelo, and Carolina got a lot of flack for this. First of all, it seems like it was overblown what happened with the Rangers, but uh, from things I read, um, a lot of teammates came out that played for him, played with him from other teams that said D'Angelo is not racist. So the whole thing was some sort of racist thing that he said. I don't know. I can't judge it. I do know that I heard that the people outside of the outside of him kind of came to his quote quote rescue that played with him before. Um, trying to remember who some of those guys were, but. Even even if we don't look at that, look at all the Rangers on Carolina that I'm sure they would have discussed this with before they went out and got them. Um, you've got Jesper Faust. You've got uh, Brady Shea. They were bringing in. They were planning on bringing in Ranta. They went and got Stepan, who also played for the Rangers. I'm sure they told them all of this. And I'm sure they discussed it with it. By the way, Derek Stepan is one of the best room builders that there is. So if there is any problems with them, to have a guy like Derek Stepan, who seems to be able to just majestically change a room 
That's what I've heard about Derek's stepdad. So he's going to help out an awful lot. Anyways, a lot of ex-Rangers playing for them, and I'm sure they discussed it with them. So my leaning is it was a little overblown. He's going to a Carolina now with a lot of ex-Ranger fans, and I think he's going to do very, very well. So what do you guys think about that D'Angelo signing there? Um, interesting indeed. Uh, next, the Chicago Blackhawks. And the big question is, how will Taves come back? And that, that is a huge question. Um, now, for me, it's Jonathan Taves. I will never discredit Jonathan Taves. I'll, I will never underestimate Jonathan Taves. Can he come back and crush it after not playing all year last year? For sure. If this fatigue problem has been there for a while, he may just be an absolute beast. But the guy is one of the greatest leaders of all time in any sport, let alone hockey. I will not underestimate him. I say he does very well. And, of course, this is one that's not even a question. It's just Marc-Andre Fleury. Basically, what's, how great is Chicago going to be with Marc-Andre Fleury? And I think it could be, you can't, again, underestimate a goaltender like Marc-Andre Fleury and what he can do for a team. This team could do anything. They have, an, they have a chance to win a cup even. I'll even go as far as to say that. When you've got a guy like Marc-Andre Fleury as a goaltender, there is nothing that a team really can't do, especially one that has built itself up pretty good here. Are there holes on Chicago? Yeah, of course there is. But guys like Marc-Andre Fleury fill those holes all by themselves because if you can't score, you can't score. <laughs> Simple as that. I think he's going to be amazing. He's going to have a fire in his belly for what happened in Vegas. And he's going to come in and do what he did to Pittsburgh when they sent him off to Vegas and make him look bad. Vegas is going to look bad. Probably. Probably. Uh, will Jones fit in his, in Chicago? And that's the third one and third question. And I think, yes, I'm Mr. Positive today, aren't I? Yes, he will fit in um, because... Tortorella tried to make Jones a um, shutdown defenseman. And with the size and all that, you would wish that he would be. But he's not. He's not that type of guy. He's a, he, he, his, Jones is at his best when he is playing a pure offensive game. And, um, I, I mean, he's, he can play defense too. Don't get me wrong. It's not like he's terrible defensively. But he's the kind of guy that if you take away the offensive aspect where he can't take risks – and he can't go and just play with the freedom of offense, it seems like his defense suffers because of it even more. So I think he's going to do well in Chicago. Um, also, you got the Bowmans there. I know what his numbers look like in Columbus the last two years. They did look good. But I think this is a better situation for Jones. Uh, Colorado Avalanche. How, uh, how will Kemper do? Um, if he doesn't do well, I'll be blown away. He was in Arizona who played a very defensive type game, but it was a very fall into your goaltender and rely on your goaltender type defense. This is going to be a case where you have, he's going to be like, I got defensemen playing positionally fantastic that can move the puck out. And, you know, like it's like almost taking the pressure off of him to just play a simple game and not have to be the savior. I think he's going to knock it out of the park as long as he stays healthy. There's another guy who's had his injury issues the last little while. And the next one is, will Kadri settle down? He's just got to. He's got to. Anything like what he did, what he's done in the past again, and I, I don't know. I don't know what the next one will be. Um. The first guy to get suspended for a whole year or something? I don't know. He's got to turn him. He's got to change the way he thinks on the ice. And from what I understand, from what I've read, and the reason why he was traded out of Toronto, is he almost acts like, ah, these stupid people, you know, like this. Uh, he he, he kind of makes fun of it. Like, oh, they can't handle 
the he's like an old school mind that won't get out of the new way of doing playing hockey and uh they had they traded him and i could see him happen in colorado again if he doesn't do something stupid before that so he better that's all i gotta say about that next The Columbus Blue Jackets, and the big question, of course, is Patrick Laine. Can He's got to come back. What are you going to do now? This is a guy, he, he came in Winnipeg. He had a lot to say. He wanted to top line minutes, and he thought he was getting screwed and all of those sort of things like that. Goes to Columbus, doesn't have a good year, and at the end of the year, he's slamming Tortorella saying that he won't let me play my game and all that kind of stuff like that. So here you go, buddy. Got a new coach. What are you going to say now? It's put up or shut up time. You got all the talent in the freaking world, Matt. And I and believe me, I've supported Lion A. I, I kind of agreed with some of his gripes before, like his reasonings as to why he's upset. I didn't really think it was that. I, I, I could see his side. Let's put it that way. But it's over now, man. This is put up or shut up time. So it's going to be fun to see what happens there. Uh, how will Brad Larson do? I am excited to see how Brad Larson does. I love watching what new coaches do. And all a lot of these new coaches that have been coming up and just knocking it out of the park. Uh, there's some fantastic coaches out there. So it's going to be fun to see what Brad Larson does. And will Elvis crush it for Kip Langan? Kip Lennox. His buddy, Elvis, comes out and says, I'm going to strive to win the Vesna this year for my buddy. Like, it, he's put his focus pure, and he's using that energy of uh, losing his friend and doing it for his friend. I want, I'm want. i so rooting for you, dude. So rooting for Elvis Merzlikens. I, I can't. I want him to just nail it. Nail it. Not to mention, I want Columbus fans to have a good team there. Uh, that's a very important market, and I want to see them do well. Uh, Dallas Stars. The first, the big question was, will they give up on Bishop? And I don't have the answer to that question. I don't think they give up on Bishop, but I think the more bigger the question really is, can he keep on playing? He's 34 years old, and it's just been injury after injury after injury. And uh, how many injuries will they have is the next question because this is an old, getting up there, man. Radulov had injuries last year. Uh, he's 35 years old. You got Jamie Ben getting up there at 32. Of course, Pavelski that just seems to just keep on going and going and going, but he's 38 years old now. When is he going to start falling backwards? Uh, Blake, Blake Como, very... And, a, a, a very old team. Secker has had his injury problems. How many injuries are they going to have? And who also is going to be their number one goaltender? I believe it's going to be Ottinger. I think Ottinger is a fantastic goaltender. He's going to strip it away. I also think, uh, I still think Kudobin's probably on his way out. I can't see how Braden Holtby signed a $2 million a year. Like they signed him for $2 million. Not a year, but $2 million to be a third goaltender. I just can't see it. Something is up there. I, I, I'm i sure of it. And I think Hudobin had problems last year with the coaching staff. And uh, uh, Burgess, Bur uh, why Burgess, I always forget his last name. Anyways, pissed him off. Huge, huge he got suspended. He basically got suspended like for three games. Rick Bonus. Why do I say Burgess? Rick Bonus. I don't know what he did, but I could definitely see him on the way out here for sure. Um, next, the Detroit Red Wings. And the big questions for the Detroit Red Wings right now are. Uh, how will the young players do? That's a question every year right now. But this, not every year, the last couple of years, but this year is getting very, even more so than ever. Uh, Philip Heronic is now 24. He's going to have to take, an, he's going to be taking a big step. Maurice Sider, they've been so heavy on him for 
quite some time. Uh, 20 years old. They've worked him up slowly like they often do in Detroit, but he's going to get a shot this year, and that's going to be exciting to watch. Um, Joseph Valino has got his shot now. He's bulked up quite a bit. Um, and there's a few guys that are on the outside with the possibility here that they've been waiting on for uh, quite some time, uh, like Tator Niederbach. Um, that, there's lots of talk of him maybe uh, being able to grab a spot, even though he was drafted in 2020. Um, uh, Alvin Grew, he, he's getting into that stage where he might get a chance. Um, there's a lot of guys here. Lucas Raymond, of course. Is he ready now? Uh, two, uh, 2018 draft pick, or sorry, 2020 draft pick, fourth overall. Uh, and Jonathan Berggren. It's almost like it would be a very big disappointment if Berggren doesn't make it this year. Um, and th this team is waiting and waiting and waiting for these young players to come up and to become what Detroit's going to be. And this is a big year for that. So that was a really good question that came from the stream. Um, and the second question, which I thought was going to be the first question, honestly, can Ned be good on a less of a good team as it was in Carolina defensively? My answer to that is I doubt it. I really do. We'll see. What do you guys think? You think Nadelkovic is going to crush it like he did in Carolina? Um, from what I saw, I saw holes that were covered up by a really good defense. I could be wrong, but that's what I thought. Uh, how good will Verana be? And my answer to that is extremely. He is by, He's chomping at the bit. 26 years old, was buried in Detroit's lineup for a bit. Now he's got a full year on a team where he's the number one left winger. He's going to be able to play with Larkin, play with a really good center, and I think he's going to be absolutely fantastic. I think he's going to knock it out of the park. What do you guys think out there, Detroit fans or other fans for that matter? Uh, Edmonton Oilers, can Mike Smith hang in there? 39-year-old goaltender. Everybody's wondering. Guy's a warrior. Absolutely love him. Loved him for a long time. But 39 is 39. Will he go and crush it at 39 years old? I would not doubt him about anything. He is just that kind of a guy. He's a warrior that could definitely do it. But a body is a body, and he's 39. So it's going to be tough. Will Zach Hyman live up to that? That is a huge question. This is so this is going to be exciting to watch. Zach Hyman with McDavid and Polia Harvey after playing with Matthews. Can he be the same? All the storylines that are going to come up with that, the, he, it's, it's huge. I do. I think anybody can play with McDavid, right? Like if he can play that well with Matthews, I think he probably will. But it's not to me the Matthews aspect of it. It's the Puglia Harvey instead of Marner. Puglia Harvey is not Marner. He used to dig it out, pass it to Marner. Marner would pass it to Puglia, to Matthews. They don't have that here. Actually, Puglia Harvey's a shoot first guy. He's going to be digging it out passing it to McDavid and then finding a way to the net while either McDavid passes it to Polya Harvey or does McDavid stuff. You know what those things are. Sickness. So that's going to be very interesting for sure. Um, and then will Keith pan out? And uh, my answer to that is maybe, kind of, sort of. I think it was a very risky move, very risky pickup to get Duncan Keith um, at his age where he really, in Chicago, in his fancy stats, everybody that Keith played with played better without him. And now he's going to change that coming to Edmonton? I don't know. I think he'll get more points because he's just got so many. You know, he just passes to McDavid and get points. But do I think he's going to be better than he was the last two years? No, I don't. So we'll see. Next, Florida Panthers. Big question. How uh, how will Bennett, Reinhardt, and Lundell do? We put them all into three because there was all of them are just as intriguing as each other. Bennett having his first full with Florida, I think he'll do fantastic. I would I hope they can try to move him over to the wing 
and let Reinhardt play Sam Reinhardt play in the middle with Huberto? I swear, <laughs> Huberto passing to Reinhardt? Oh my gosh. That would be absolutely amazing. I could see 50. I could see 50 from Reinhardt if that happens. Um, and then which Bob Brofsky are we going to get? The one that won business in Columbus or the one that we've seen in Florida for the last couple of years? Honestly, I think we're going to see the Florida guy. And, of course, can Spencer Knight be the number one? And um, so much to ask from a kid that's, what, 20 years old now? But the guy is incredible. Oh, my gosh, he looks like a veteran out there. I hate to do this to young goaltenders. Like, you know, it's always a risk. You always go, you're always you always going like, oh, are you going to hold out? But if there's anybody that can do it, it's Spencer Knight. That guy is just an absolute beast in the net. He does not look like he's 20 years old when he's playing at all or when you're talking to him. You know, uh, he has crushed it everywhere, and I would not be surprised if he keeps on doing so. Bob Rosky, on the other hand, I think it's more of the same personally. Uh, L.A. Kings. Yeah, L.A. Kings. Will Byfield play and how well he will he do? It shows here that Byfield's not on the roster. I think he's. I think they're going to move him in slowly. They don't have to after getting Philip Deno. Uh, maybe move Velarde to the wing. But the main thing is this is the reason why I was in the Buffalo one. I was talking about. I think L.A. may be the one to go after Eichel is because they can package a Velarde or somebody like that. And so Byfield has a spot when he's ready at any time to get even Byfield and Turcotte. They're so deep up the middle. They could do that and get like, if as long as they know his Eichel's healthy, you got an unbelievable top two there if they do that. But um, I don't know. They're going to take it easy with them. From what I've heard is... His he's big, he's strong, he's got all the tools, but there, but there's uh, things he still needs to work on, and they don't want to they don't want to rush him in L.A. L.A. is one of the better, one of the best uh, at bringing up prospects, developing prospects in the league, and uh, whatever they do, I I, I think they're going to do the right thing because they usually always do. Uh, how will uh, Dan O do in L.A.? He's probably going to be close to that selfie level self that he was. Uh, before and he'll give Anze Kopitar uh, a great opportunity to now to be the offensive force on the team and not have to play you know such a huge role on both sides of the ice all the time all the time all the time I love the I love the pickup for them I think it's going to work out well for them um, and then how will young players fit in as we just talked about you've got uh, Kupari and uh uh, who should be ready this year. And um, Jared Dolan Anderson. I really like Jared, Jared Dolan Anderson. Ar Arthur Kalia could play this year. How are they going to fit in? If they're going to fit in, like I said, LA seems to know when they should do that sort of thing. But I can say that when they do, it looks like for how good they've been doing in the AHL and, and you know the little bit I've had a chance to see them, this team's going to be freaking awesome. Uh, next, Minnesota Wild. And uh, the big question was, how will Kaprizov play now that he got his contract? And my answer is, he'll crush it. He's just one of those. Watch him. He's one of the shiftiest, one of the most skilled players I have seen in a very, very, very long time. I don't think he gets has any problems after that contract at all. I, he looks like a future 100-point player, and I wouldn't even be surprised if he hits it this year. Can Cam Talbot keep it up? I think so. Um, yeah, he had a difficult time earlier in his career, mostly because Edmonton destroyed his confidence by overplaying him too much. But it looks like he's grown up. He's all grown up now, and he's playing. He's being the coach or the uh, goaltender everybody always thought he would be, and I think he'll keep on doing so. And can Rossi make the team? And and I talk to Minnesota fans a lot because I post these on uh, with questions and stuff like that on all the uh, um, on Facebook and all of that, and we have great discussions there. And to everybody, I'm hearing thinks that Rossi makes it this year. Like he, 
he looks fantastic. He reminds me of uh, Backstrom a little bit, but maybe even more skilled. So will he make it this year? He's a young kid. Uh, it's hard to say, but I my inkling says, yeah. I think they're saving that spot for him. And even though he was injured last year, I think he's at least going to get a darn good shot at it. They're going to give him every chance. Montreal Canadiens, our final one for this part one. Um, will the Canadians regret KK? And uh, I don't know, Dvorak, man, this is a great opportunity for Dvorak. Um, I've been saying for uh, people have been talking about him for a long time. I think he's possibly could have a Selkie like season. He could at least be in the conversation. Um, he's a great two way center. And uh, I don't know if it's going to be a terrible regret. But Kokaniemi could really do some big things in Carolina, that's for sure. The kid's got lots of talent. Uh, I know that Montreal's kind of poo-pooing on him right now. Um, but I don't think they're going to regret it this year. I think Dvorak is going to do very well in Montreal. Not because I, I, don't, I also don't think they're going to make the playoffs. But I don't think it'll be because of Dvorak. Or anybody will think that. And the next question is, how will Dvorak do? So there you go. Um, and then my big question, this was the third question, and actually I think it's the biggest question. How will Drouin do? And I know you're watching out there, Mr. Drouin, and I'm rooting for you, dude. Uh, going, Coming out with your anxiety issues or whatever the case may be, hearing the stories that you didn't sleep for a couple of days and then, had to play you. I think Drew and put up some pretty damn good numbers. If you consider that, if you've ever known people with anxiety or depression or whatever to play in at an elite level like that, with that in the back of your mind or working with that issue, I'm rooting for you, man. I want to see you crush it, crush it. I'm not a Montreal Canadiens fan per se. I'm not, not a fan either, but I'll be going, I'm, I live in Edmonton, I'll be going, I want to go to those Montreal games. I want to go to that Montreal game and root for you, buddy, because I know people and have gone through it myself, actually, and uh, I love to see people succeed through stuff like that. That's my full 42. That's all I got to give for you today. I hope you enjoyed the fine programming. Sub yourself up, man. Come join the live stream. I'd love to have you. We have so much frolic, and we build videos like this so you can be part of. Why wouldn't you want to do that sort of thing? I don't know. Your Pearls of Wisdom necklace is coming in the mail right now. Got Helen and uh, Helen and uh, Hernandez, forgot his name, getting in the Pearlocopters as we speak, bringing it to you. Signed. I signed it for you. So there. Have a great day, everybody. That's my full 42K. Bye.